Hey everybody, Monday morning here, Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich along with you. We've got a day with significant severe weather risk today. It's a day we need you to stay weather aware. Kind of rare in the summer to see this type of setup. And so this is going to be one of those days you definitely have to have a couple different ways to get warnings, especially by the evening. So it's a day we want you to stay weather aware. The reason that is the case today is because if you look what's happening here, we've got this pretty significant severe weather risk for most of the Carolinas in the Mid-South. If you look at the map, we don't normally see this high of a risk during the summer. It's more of a spring or fall or even sometimes winter when the jet stream's more active. In the summer, you get summer storms, right? But you don't tend to have the wind energy or the jet stream energy on top of the heat and humidity. See that area in black? That's called the significant risk area. That means really out of the ordinary to see that type of risk. So our primary concerns today, I'll move my head over here. You can see the timing for most of us is after five, but the mountains, it might be closer to three. I'll show you that in a minute. Wind, wind, wind. Wind is the issue. Yes, there could be some isolated tornadoes, but wind is wind, folks. 60, 70, 80 mile an hour downburst winds could cause extensive damage. And that's our big concern today. So please stay weather aware. You could see our concerns here. I'll move my head back over winds almost into the extreme category. That's very rare for these parts. And just to give you an idea of what that means, here's a look at that outlook, damaging wind outlook. That's a 45% chance within 25 miles of any point on the map in that pink area of seeing severe winds. That's 58 or 60 mile an hour winds or higher. That's pretty, that's a 50-50 that's a shot, basically, that you're going to see wind damage within 25 miles of your location. So that is really, really high for us. I talked about the timing. I'll get into the future cast in a minute, but this is really the map you need to see. I'll kind of move my head down here so folks in Raleigh can see. 3 to 5 p.m., okay? 3 to 5 p.m., that's where it's going to affect the mountains. And 5 to 7 here, and then 7 to 9 here. Again, I'm being very well, like, kind of rounded. Give this plus or minus a half hour, 45 minutes. But the reason we try to stay weather aware in case the timing should change at all as we go into the afternoon hours. So this map is really, really crucial to look at. So let's look at the current setup. Nothing happening right now. If you go outside today, early afternoon, Hot, humid air. I mean, it is getting stifling out there. If I were to throw up the dew point temperatures, which I will quickly, I mean, it's hot. We get that, right? But one of the things I look at is how high the dew points are. The dew points, you know, make us uncomfortable, but they also are fuel for storms. We're well into the 70s, so it's super muggy. That is ample fuel for these storms, and the skies are almost completely clear ahead of this front. And in fact, in fact let me show you the, uh, the satellite imagery. you got some low clouds here, but once these low clouds give away, Lots of sunshine breaking out here in the southeast. This will set the stage for what's going to head our way. What we're going to be watching is back to the west. This should be pretty easy to see this thing start to develop back in here and then start to move towards the east by late afternoon. So let's get into that future cast and show you this setup. All right, here we are. This is starting at 11 a.m., so not a lot going on. We'll go to about 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock, probably just after lunch time, we'll start to see pretty significant line here. Now, the thing to watch for for tornado risk is isolated cells like we're seeing here, but even embedded in this line, there could be isolated cells. But what's gonna happen over here is likely gonna be more of the tornado risk in there. But as it pushes east and becomes more of a, a squall line or a big thunderstorm complex, that will reduce the tornado risk, but actually increase the wind risk. So this is three o'clock. So you saw three o'clock, the mountains kind of beginning, but it's really four o'clock. So there's a look, I'll tilt the map here so it's a little easier to see for everybody. Um, you could see that we're gonna see a pretty nasty lines of storm developing around four o'clock. We'll head towards five o'clock. That's when things get active. That's why I say after five, because the timing really, things go, start going downhill pretty quickly after five o'clock. But in the mountains, kind of pay attention to the three to five o'clock time frame. Um, Foothills, Piedmont. Now, the one thing I'm, I'm a little worried about watching some of the data today is there are these cells developing ahead of the main line. These could have rotation in them. So those are the ones that you got to stay weather aware for. They could pop up and we could see tornadic cells ahead of it, but they look to be short in duration as the thing becomes one big line pretty quickly. So this is a rare case where the tornado risk is actually higher in the mountains and foothills than it is across the Piedmont. We don't often say that, but that's the case with this setup. Um, then it moves into the Piedmont. You see six o'clock, starts mar marching across seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock. So what's going on in the atmosphere, just to peel back the curtain a little bit here, we've got a couple of jet streaks or what we call maximum wind speed 
areas in the jet stream, one coming down here, one going up in here. These are up around the jet stream level, so 25, 30,000 feet. At the surface, we've got this really strong south flow building in. And so you could imagine, you can imagine what happens if you get a storm that develops from, let's say, the surface to 30, 40, 50,000 feet, which is pretty typical for a thunderstorm. The winds at the bottom of the storm are going to be coming from this direction, and the winds at the top of the storm are coming from this direction. That makes the whole storm want to rotate counterclockwise. So it starts to spin, and you get rotating updrafts. Those rotating updrafts drive hot, humid air up into the cool part of the atmosphere where it gets really cold, and that air wants to come crashing back down. So you get really strong updrafts and really strong downdrafts. That creates a lot of severe weather, hail, wind, and if they sync up correctly, you get tornadoes. So this is why today's a, a rare case. Typically in the summer, we have tons of that warm, humid air at the surface. We're never lacking for that. We just don't usually have these really strong winds. The winds are typically pretty light in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere in the summer because the jet stream is way up in Canada. Well, we're getting this disturbance pretty far to the south, which is setting it up. So again, this is a crucial, crucial day to stay weather aware, something we don't often say. I mean, honestly, one of the stronger setups we've seen even in the spring this year. In 2023, this might be one of the stronger setups for damaging winds that I've seen. So again, I'll recap here just quickly. This is a look at the timing. Three to five in the mountains, five to seven for the Piedmont, and then seven to nine for everybody else. Of course, I'll have updates throughout the afternoon. Stay weather aware. Make sure you're charging your phone up. Have three ways to get warnings today and have a plan. Outdoor activities, once the storm hits, off limits. Have a place to go inside. Everybody needs to be inside when these storms pass. You can be outside before they get here and after, but when they're heading our way, get everybody inside.